Howdy, Heroes Heart. This is Kyle Ferguson. I'm sitting down today with Slug Hunter of Wild Heart Omega here in a Storm Division NGS game versus Team Error 44. Slug Hunter, how you doing? Doing pretty good today. How how did this name happen? I, I assume that you played either a ton of Medivh or a ton of Zeratul, and how did you end up Malfurion? Uh, I did. I actually have played a ton of Zeratul um, and would hunt Abathurs around the map with my friends. So that's how the name came along. But, but uh, you'd have to know that. So so were you a different name? Was this a Smurf and then it became the main? How did that uh, happen? No, 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 no. I used to, I went by someone as far. Um, my real name's Daniel. So I used to go by Danny G. And then I switched it to just like a random battle net one. So I was Swanky Tiger for a little bit. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and then eventually I settled on this, and then I just kind of became known by it, so I stuck with it. So how did that transfer happen from being guy that teleports and does a lot of crazy things to now hiding in the back, managing everybody else? Um, This kind of happened this season. I was playing a lot with uh, Wild Hearts main rosters, uh, DPS Unaverted, so I was queuing with him a lot. I just decided that I wanted to pick up support, just kind of for, for fun, learn a new thing. Sure. Um, and I found out I was just really enjoying it. So I'm like, okay. I played in a few in-houses, had a lot of fun there. I'm like, you know, maybe I can try playing competitively. Okay. Uh, that, Omega that had a spot they needed filled. So I was like, hey, I can fill this. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about Malfurion here. I guess in, in that way, since you're just getting into support, is Malfurion a personal favorite or is this like really draft dependent? Uh, it's definitely a comfort pick for me. Um, it's something I'm very comfortable on. I've played Malfurion just for a while, even when I wasn't a support player. It was one of the ones I was comfortable on. Um, so it just kind of was one that I just play a lot of. So I'm very comfortable on the character. They are so incredibly diverse. I mean, tanks have to fulfill so many particular goals, but in our current design, it really does feel like the supports get to be extremely different from game to game. They for sure are. Um, I mean, it, it, it's a thing in draft sometimes where I'm like, I don't know what I really want to play this game because it could go so many different ways depending on comp or, you know, enemy comp. It's just like, there's so many different good supports right now that it can be hard to pick sometimes. Did you by chance play a World of Warcraft Druid or even a Priest and that's what draw you to Malfurion? Uh, no, I was never really a healer in World of Warcraft. Um, I played mostly warrior. Oh, in World interesting. Of yeah. So here, um, so here on Malfurion, uh, where was this picked up in the draft, if you remember? Um, most likely fairly early. Just Malfurion's just like a general good pick. He's fairly safe. Um, doesn't really have too many weaknesses and is just can fit in a lot of compositions. Okay. So my probably outdated and scared to play him knowledge is that mm -hmm. Malfurion is is just going to be completely countered by any burst mage, particularly Pyroblast. Um, not entirely. It kind of depends more on how good of Moonfires you can get and playing around your team with Cleanse and your Root. Um, you, your like burst save comes less from healing and more from either cleanse or your root or sometimes like twilight dream um, You're less just using healing tools around it. And it's more around your team than uh, to not get blown up Gotcha, okay, so so the fact that he could be early pick means that you're just good <laughs> enough to play him uh, as, <laughs> as, as kind of what I'm gathering here because mm -hmm. you know, you might notice the enemy side uh, is running a uh, like like a Lucio and double bruiser and then they throw another tank on and then they like throw in a Vala or mm -hmm. something and you have this giant ball of team that you could moonfire very very easily for heals yeah that doesn't really necessarily exist here it's a little clumpy but if you're just good mm -hmm. at moon firings it, it doesn't matter what kind of team they have because you're gonna hit your moon fires mm -hmm. there are definitely some teams <laughs> that uh it hurts to play Malfurion into but um, unless they draft super hard dive, it's generally just fine. And then you generally you just pivot your other characters to help deal with that. So in general, it's a manage the regrowths, make sure they're on everybody possible, and then mm -hmm. hit moon fires and keep your positioning safe while doing so. Yeah. You also want to look to follow up on your tank CC or place roots for peel. 
Um, mostly, I'm just holding root off for, in this game, like Lupus's CC or if Notori gets a good spear. Um, or I'm just looking to put it like on top of my DPS when they go on top of them because they are very melee heavy. How do you find that works in solo queue? If you if you end up playing Malfurion in solo queue, um, honestly, not too different. Okay. Um, sometimes I sometimes I can't rely as much on my tank, but generally I can still just try to place roots on top of the priority targets for the enemy team. Um, especially if they have a bunch of melee. I think I might have played too much Nazebo. I think of Roots as like this great zoning tool that's gonna, like where you're standing right now, gonna control that area, mm -hmm. but it spreads so slowly that they end up just going, ah, I'm fine. Uh, let me dive anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes. It can be, once it's fully formed, it's a nice uh, zoning area. So sometimes in smaller chokes, it's very nice, but in big areas, it's generally not too incredible for zoning. And then you probably end up on cooldown, your tank makes an engage, you don't have it to react in the first place, and now it's kind mm -hmm. of a, a wasted moment. Mm -hmm. So, is there any contest, let's start talking about the Talos a little bit, any contest at level one? Uh, not really in competitive. The sleep is just so strong. Yeah. I mean, the way sleeps work in hot, uh, hots, uh, where it's essentially just a 0.5 second stun for the first uh, fourth of it. So, like, you, you can't get interrupted. So you're essentially adding at least a minimum of 0.5 seconds of CC onto your route. So it's and not, the other talents just don't do enough. Yeah, it's not even that you're coordinated enough to not wake the target and everyone's going, no, 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 we want that full two seconds. It's just that you're mm -hmm. adding on a 0.5 seconds done. Yeah, you have that choice and it's just, yeah. It's just really good. Fair enough, fair enough. Rejuvenation, also casted on Malfurion. This just feels great. Yeah, the, the, I mean, this is just like a very nice talent to have. You don't have to worry about constantly uh, putting cues on yourself. It allows you to have it on everyone at your team at the same time. Um, there are occasions where I would go Shando's Clarity instead, the trait talent. If I don't feel like I'm under like any pressure from poker just in general, and I have a character that will use the CDR and the mana really effectively, like a Vala or pre-nerf Sigara, I would go it. Um, Generally, it's it's pretty much just re rejuvenation. Is there ever a reason where Malfurion's Innervate would be the reason to pick, or something that is you know really really important to a comp? Um, I don't know if I'd ever say it's like the reason to be a pick, but there can be situations where it's just really strong with a character, you know, like Bala or Gul'dan or something that wants to, like, spam its spells out or has mana issues. Mm. Um, even sometimes just putting it on tanks as well is very effective. Yeah, because it gives, uh, gives that basic ability cooldown. Mm -hmm. And then you got another really hard button to use, uh, Nature's Cure. Activate to remove all stuns, roots, and slows from allies affected by regrowth. Mm -hmm. I mean, cleanses in general are just very good. Um, uh, as well as the other talents on that tier just aren't really that good is another thing. Is So even if there's not that much to cleanse, I'll generally just go cleanse anyway because the other options aren't really worth it um, in the way they're currently designed. Okay, so even though like removing a Stukov slow wouldn't be as impactful as getting rid of you know, a tank engage, like moving everybody out of an ETC slide or something like that. This is just worth it for all those little removals and maybe yeah. hitting level 10. I mean, this game, they have Durance of Hate, so right. it's like I can remove that. Stukov's probably going to go root, and even if they don't, sometimes, you know, that level 1 on Stukov's pretty big. You know, just basically getting Earthquake every 60 seconds, so if I can remove that, that's really nice. What about something like Wild Growth for newer Malfurions, just to kind of training wheels it for a bit? Um, yeah, if you're newer to the character and just want to, like, get used to their kit, I think that's fine. Um, but as you get better, I think learning to play around Nature's Cure is really good, especially against things like, let's say they had a Hanzo with Dragon Arrow or something uh, else that has a big, like, AoE stun or root. Uh, cleansing, like, all of your allies from it is very strong. So don't leave those training wheels on too long. Yeah. What's the level 10 choice here? Because I can, I can kind of see an argument for whatever you did, I'd be like, ah, of course. <laughs> that is what yeah. you wanted. <laughs> so they, they have things like Warden's Cage. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like a great excuse to 
break off and engage, but you end up going with tranquility. Um, I don't really want to be in the warden's cage, um, and especially with sanctification, if I go for a dream and it gets sancted, it's, I mean, I'm just probably dead. Hmm. Um, I mean, I could potentially interrupt sync with it, but I also figure that this game with our characters, I can probably just, like, they, they weren't killing us fast enough for me to have to worry about, you know, running up and dreaming. I could just trank everyone back up to full. Um, trank's mostly effective as... Not really an in-fight all, or le but like a like partway through fight, you know, everyone's blown their cooldowns, everyone's put out a bunch of damage, but my team is now full HP again because they were in my trank. So would you use it at the start of... So let, let's use the Warden Cage example, which definitely comes mm -hmm. up as the game goes on. Yeah. You see Maya make a big ol' engage. Would we pop trank <laughs> then for the armor and for the healing, or would you wait a moment, let everybody take some damage, and then try to use the healing part of it instead? Uh... It depends. I think in this game, I pretty much usually am just popping it because the all armor is also uh, very nice for it. It just depends, I think, on the enemy comp. Um, sometimes you don't really have an option. You just have to use as fast as possible just to see if you can save someone. Uh, and, and in general, it's stacking. Even if you're using it at the start of a fight, it's still very nice because it stacks with the rest of your heals. Um, and especially against their team, they're very all in. They don't really fight super long they want to like try to make a quick play so i'm mostly just going to try to trank and remove any possibility of that i think it's a really important moment that happened on screen there everyone was in the pit and mm -hmm. you were so far away from it only stepping up to even <laughs> put a root on it. it it's impressive how safe you have to be uh yeah it's definitely something i had to get used to um and it actually got to a point where i was playing too safe uh, so I wasn't able to make as many plays, uh, and I kind of had to be told, it's like, you you have to, like, eventually walk up, because <laughs> you can't just sit back forever. Because when I first started playing healer, my main focus was trying not to die. Yeah. Uh, which I became very good at, but I also sometimes would just sit too far back and not really be that effective. You don't seem to have any uh, mana issues, which is something I run into on Malfury, and you're definitely keeping your regrowths out, so I guess it's just not spamming and tangling roots wrongfully. Uh, it, it's that. I'm not spamming and tangling roots a lot. I use it, you know, pretty much only for peel or off of CC. Uh, and also just managing how much I'm moon firing. Trying not to moon fire. Just if my team's full HP and I have rebos and all of them, there's no reason for me to really walk up in moon fire. It doesn't do enough damage That's to be fair. that relevant. I'm not trying to moon fire minions too much um, because it doesn't really do as much. The rest of my team should be wave clearing and it's, it just ends up being a mana sink. Um, so it is the, the main thing I spend mana on is just, you know, regrowths over and over to make sure I have uh, it up on people for fights. Yeah, oh, I, I can see I can see some moon fires being unleashed here during <laughs> during a boss clear. Well, there's one there's one yeah. we saw one, but uh, no, I, I I see what you mean about holding on to that mana. At at 13, you got nature's swiftness. I think the most popular pick at the level. Uh, yes. Just for more running away goodness, or maybe more uh, participation would be what you had to work on uh, there. Yeah, you, you, I can actually stay farther back, and if I have all my, you know, regrows on people, I can still walk up and follow up from a farther distance then. Yeah. Um, it's also, I mean, yeah, you're, you're just extra mobile. You'll be hit generally with less stuff because you can move out of the way. Uh, it's just overall just a very good talent. Uh, the only other consideration I think is on that tier is Revitalize if you win uh, Shando's Clarity at 4. Uh, the combination of those two means you basically just never have mana problems. Um, just ever. Interesting. So, but would that would that even come up? It's so late in the game. Like 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 Jaina and, and Malfury and like some of these heroes. It depends. It's not just the mana problems as well. It's also because it in, uh, reduces your basic ability cooldowns, you can also spam more moon fires or more roots, depending. Okay. Uh, so that could technically cause mana problems from the extra CDR, but you get the extra mana, which is pretty nice. Um, again, that'd only be in a situation where I felt like I was under like no threat and didn't have to worry that much about positioning. Gotcha. That makes perfect mm -hmm. sense. What about the hindering moon fire? It feels like a little bit, would you want a bigger gas tank or a car with better mm -hmm. mileage? slow versus movement speed yeah I, i've thought about this talent before but the thing about it is is that i don't really want to be prioritizing moon fire for the slow i want to try uh, to get at an, an, the, as many people as possible to get a um just just to get as much healing as possible out 
So I I don't think it's necessarily bad. I think the movement speed's just better. Now in that situation, I wanted to know if that was intentional. You're two levels up. You pop tranquility. The warden's cage goes out. Were you basically like, yes, let me in here. I know I'm gonna be great. I, I was not. I don't think that was fully okay. intentional. That fight was actually saved. I've watched this game before. That was actually saved by uh, Reb having a really good wailing arrow on their back line. Um, otherwise, that fight could have gone a bit more south. But um, I was not intentionally going into the warden's cage there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, level yeah. 16, you got Moonlit Harmony, which is actually one of the ones I see less often. I usually see in Nature's Balance. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say for me, um, I either go Ysir's Gift or Moonlit Harmony. Generally, mm -hmm. I will default to Ysir's Gift. Uh, it's really good for being able to just throw cues on your team and then not even have to Moonfire just to keep them up. Uh, and you kind of save mana and generally can play even farther back so say, yeah uh, <laughs> that makes perfect yeah. sense yeah you can just play as far back as possible but this game i want moonlit harmony because they were jumping on top of us and i thought the only way they ever win fights is if they get some sort of burst off so if i can deny their ability to burst someone out then we should just win makes perfect sense so is nature's mm -hmm. balance then another one of these Training wheels, bigger move fires call, yeah. are easier I would consider to it a training wheels talent for yeah. sure. Um, I would say that unless they were to buff it back up again, so the regrowth, extra regrowth duration was like five seconds, I, I don't think I'll consider the talent. Yeah, I guess there probably is like a perfect math moment where you could have it active on everybody, therefore being saving mana mm -hmm. by casting it last. Mm hmm. Let's go back a quick moment because you guys basically at 20 and then just ended the games. All the keeps went down and even a core call here. They It would be tough for them to get through all your forts before you guys were back up. So any yeah. sort of core call here seems really good. You got Serenity. Each enemy uh, hero hit by Moonfire reduces mm -hmm. the cooldown tranquility. Maybe three seconds. Increase tranquility's healing. That, 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 that seems great. But is there is there another path that you would ever go? Uh, so I'm always thinking between Serenity and Life Bloom, pretty much. Okay. Uh, I rarely will go Astral Commune if I'm Dream. It's pretty much then I'll just always go Life Bloom. Uh, in this scenario, we're likely looking to just end game, and I do have Trank up. So just popping a Trank and just running at their core is a really good option. Sure. Um, but sometimes if it's like we're about to get into our last fight and I don't have Trank up and I don't think I'll be able to Moonfire get it up, I'll just go Life Bloom. Or sometimes if I just have like a really you know high HP targets on my team i can just you know put regrowth on them and that instant heal is actually very nice to have especially if they're just trying to focus one target down instantly heals its target that's in so that's completely mm -hmm. aside there is no instant heal on this baseline uh increasing yeah. your own heal with yasera's gift wouldn't be affected because that's heal over time so, okay so mm -hmm. there, there's no stack necessary to get to life bloom ultimate effectiveness this can just be a good level 20 talent yes would you ever do Lunar Shower in a non meme sort of way? Um, I don't think so compared to the other two. Maybe with Moonlit Harmony, it could have some extra synergy that would be nice, but I haven't played around with that talent enough to be sure. Okay, okay. Well, as, as, the, as the core explodes here, any advice for... Brand new Malfurions, just getting the character for the first time. Um, just try to, you know, get your regrowth on people and watch your positioning for the most part. Uh, you know, don't necessarily try to spam root too much. You'll just run out of mana, and it's pretty hard to hit raw roots on people. Um, so in, in general, just, you know, try to manage your mana well and make sure you have regrowth on everyone and don't run at the enemy team. <laughs> play really yeah. I, I love that idea with the movement speed how you kind of added to the kit that made you safer mm -hmm. that's a great way to think of things so thank you for all the information so i kind of really appreciate it uh, everyone watching here at youtube be sure to like subscribe ring that bell because we've got more learn to play content for here's the storm coming out announcements are already rolling about the ccl season three so stay tuned thanks for watching